It's Lee Amber. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's really important um, for black women and that is hair care in the summertime when it comes to swimming, whether you're in the pool or at the beach. Um, it's something that I've personally struggled with for years. Um, it's, it's how do we maintain our hair and keep it healthy in the summertime. And uh, so today I have brought with me a key expert. This is my hairdresser, Cece. She is with Naturally Gifted Hair Studio and Cece has done a tremendous job of just getting my hair healthy again. I, um, I started seeing her about two and a half years ago. I had a lot of heat damage. Um, and so she has gotten my hair back thick, full and healthy. And last summer I was in the pool all summer long with my boys swimming um, in a chlorinated pool and my hair is still healthy. And so I brought her on today so that we can talk about how to um, be able to have the opportunity to get into the pool, enjoy it, enjoy swimming while still protecting your hair. Um, because I know that that is a barrier for many of us um, in terms of swimming or learning to swim um, or just being able to enjoy the water. So first, so I've got two questions for Cece. First off, how does chlorine impact black women's hair? Chlorine impacts black hair by removing its natural oil and moisture from the hair. It also can remove the natural oils, causing the hair to be more dry, uh, damaged. It can cause cuticle damage over time. So you really want to make sure that you are staying on top of your moisture and hydration. And all of that really starts from the inside. So making sure that you are, you're drinking um, a good amount of water, that's going to keep your hair uh, healthy and hydrated um, before you even get in the water. All right. So you shared with us, CC, how we can protect our hair, right? Or you're going to talk us through that because what you said is hydration is really important. Very. So um, what else can we do as black women to protect our hair? Um, I am going to share with you guys three things that I do throughout the summer. But first, um, and a lot of that came from discussion with CC. but first, um, in general, how can, you know, what are, what are the things that you would recommend as an expert that we do to, um, to protect our hair while swimming regularly? Um, for my um, black women who are, or black people in general who are swimming regularly, I recommend that you, um, if you can get a swim cap on, wear a swim cap. It's okay. I know they're not the cutest thing and you really want to look cute when you're at the pool, but protect your hair first. Um, so me and Liz will go over a few swim caps that we have recommended for you guys. Now, if you can't wear the swim caps and you just really want to wear your hair out, um, the best thing that you could do is go ahead and saturate your hair first with water. Your hair is going to absorb um, the water once inside the pool. So you really don't want your hair taking in all that chlorine. So to prevent your hair from absorbing so much of that chlorine, uh, the chlorinated pool, you can first start by drenching your hair in water or aloe vera juice is really good. Um, but if you, I would just jump in the shower and do it. Go ahead and drench your hair with the water. Um, you would then apply a leave-in conditioner or a regular cheap conditioner. I wouldn't use your good stuff because um, you'll just be washing it right out after the pool. You want to um, saturate your hair with the conditioner. After that, you want to go ahead and apply your favorite oil, uh, a light oil such as sweet almond oil, um, avocado oil, um, argan oil is really great. You can saturate your hair with those oils. After that, your hair will be considered locked, that moisture will be locked into your hair. Once you enter the pool, your hair is going to be protected by that conditioner and oil that you've already put on your hair. Okay, so based on what Cece just shared with us on how we protect our hair, what I did want to share are three different things that I do throughout the summer. Um, and what I, you know, call those are my three different protection options. And again, a lot of this I got from just discussion with CC as she and I put together a plan for my hair and how to best protect it um, in the summertime, being that I would be in the pool um, almost every day. So based on those three different options, um, what I do uh, first and foremost, I call it school protection. And this goes back to the swim cap that CC spoke about. 
So for that pool protection, what you'll first need is a disposable swim cap. You'll put this on your head, and then afterwards, you will get one of these. This is a swim band, okay? It's really tight. So you will then um, cover that swim cap with the swim band. After that, you'll put on your actual swim cap. So that's three layers of protection that's really going to stop um, that water from getting into your scalp. This is a standard size swim cap from Speedo, but if you have longer hair like I do, or if you have braids, anything like that, I got this one off of Amazon, it's called Lip Top, and um, you can get a swim cap like this, a bigger one, and it um, just gives you a bit more overhang. So um, that is what I do if I am trying to really go swimming in the water and I want to protect that hair. What I will say about this method, which is also great if you have like a little girl that's taking some bottom lesson, um, you can also do that and get, you know, just a little girl size cap. Um, but with this method, I would not recommend doing it if you are, if you've got your children in the pool with you. The reason being is that it is really tight on your head and it will um, impede your hearing. So you'll be able to hear, but you won't be able to hear as clearly. And so just in terms of swim safety and making sure that everyone around you is safe and protected, um, that's not a method I would recommend if you are, you know, um, watching or monitoring in one pool. I would use this method if I am out, you know, swimming, um, you know, by myself or with other adults that, um, that, you know, know how to swim. The second method, and this is actually what I do quite frequently, and I call this splash protection. So um, I found these caps online, the link is in the description, um, and I just thought they were really cute. It looks like a shower cap inside, if you can see that. So um, it's water resistant, and then on the outside, it's just a soft cap. So what I do is I usually just pin my hair up, and then I put this over it. So what that does is it just really protects my hair from water being splashed. My children like to splash a lot while I'm in the pool with them. So I'm not gonna dump my head in the water with this cap because if I do, my hair will get wet. Um, but what it will do is that it will just protect from any splashing that anyone's doing in the pool um, and keep your hair dry. And then the third option is really that no protection. And that's, you know, when um, we're just gonna be carefree. And so we're going to do the steps that Cece talked about just in terms of conditioning the hair before, um, moisturizing the hair, making sure the hair is wet before we get into the pool, um, and that is going to help, um, you know, ensure that we're not fully drenching our, our hair in chlorine or really get that chlorine, um, you know, into our scalp. And then afterwards, of course, we're going to wash um, and then deep condition our hair. So uh, with these three methods, what I do so that I am able to consistently get into the pool with my boys and also continue to get my hair done is I, you know, I kind of toggle back and forth. So if I've just gotten my hair done, um, I know I don't want to get it wet, but my boys want to get in the pool, I will pin it up and I will put on this cap. If it is the week that I'm coming back to get my hair done, then um, I may go ahead and just, you know, allow my hair to get immersed in the water and then just make sure I'm washing it and conditioning it afterwards. So, you know, going back and forth so that I'm not necessarily getting it wet every day, but you know, just throughout um, cycle or time distance of you know between or the length of time between when I'm getting my hair done um, is what I tend to do. And um, also, just more in the summer, I do focus on more natural styles, um, which CC is an expert at. So um, that way, if I do have this on, I'm not you know sweating out um, my press, and then it's just it's a lot easier to maintain. Um, but continuing to get your hair done regularly is still really important. So that's just one last thing if you want to talk about, even if you're, getting, even if you're going swimming and things like that, um, it's just, it's important, right? Because I remember last summer, and I'll let you talk, but last summer, I remember like in the middle of the summer when you started to see some dryness, you gave me some tips of what I could do mm -hmm. um, because I had been in the pool so much. Yeah. Um, so after, let's talk about it real quick, after you get out of the pool, so let's say you're going to go to the pool Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, throughout the weekend, you're going to be consistent with getting in and out of the pool, and you've done your lock method with drenching your hair with either um, water or aloe vera juice, 
Then you're gonna apply that conditioner to your hair. After that, you're gonna apply that oil to your hair. That's gonna be your LCO method before you get into the pool. If you've done these things, then you can wait till su Sunday when you're done swimming in the pool for good to shampoo your hair because you are gonna have to clarify your hair. Paul Mitchell has a great um, clarifying shampoo that removes the chlorine from your hair. That would be my recommendation. We'll link that at the bottom. After you've done these things, you make sure that you are clarifying your scalp with the clarifying shampoo. I would clarify your hair after you've done all of these recommendations. Um, it is a good thing to go ahead and add some steam hydration to your hair care regimen. If you are natural, you have to have steam. I don't know how you're living with natural <laughs> hair without a steam or a hydration hair. So yes. me and Liz are always laughing because we talk about it so, yes. so much. Um, but that is a really good thing to do to hydrate your hair. Um, steaming your hair before before you get in the pool and after. I would really steam, I would recommend you steam your hair at least once a month. Um, steaming and also oiling, please oil your scalp and oil your hair. After you steam and hydrate your hair, it's very important that you lock in that moisture with some oil. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you can have like grapeseed oil, avocado oil, sweet almond is one of my all time favorites. For anybody, I think it would be great. All right, so if you have any questions, we would love to hear them, please drop them. Thank you so much for watching. And we just wanna encourage you as black women, let's get in the pool, learn yeah. how to swim if you don't know how to swim, but enjoy the summer, enjoy the water, and, um, and yeah, thank you so much, Cece, for helping us. Thank you, thank you, and enjoy is that hair. You can still go out, you do not have to stop yourself. Just because your hair is natural, you don't have to stop your everyday living. We are here to just help you make it a little bit better. Yes. Thank you.